Hey everyone, today we're talking about a huge topic that everyone always gets questions on. Let's talk about retinol and retinal. And I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite products, Medicaid's Crystal Retinal. Now, retinal is short for retinaldehyde. This is a vitamin A molecule, a bit like retinol, retinoic acid, tretinoin, adapalene, and even isotretinoin. They all work to reduce fine lines, wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, photo damaged skin, and even acne. I'm gonna explain why they're different in just a second and why retinal might be the thing you're looking for. This video is kindly sponsored by Medicaid. I have mentioned their Crystal Retinal products in loads of different videos and when they approached me to work with them I knew I loved the product so it was an easy yes. I've purchased them myself before and really like the products and I'll explain why a bit later in this video. I'm Dr. Supner, I'm a doctor who suffered with acne and I've studied dermatology and that makes me the perfect person to talk about it. So let's get started. First things first, let's clarify the fundamentals and basics. What is retinol? What is retinal? Both of these molecules are part of the vitamin A family. They're also known as retinoids. They effectively reduce fine lines, wrinkles, and acne. Retinoids are actually one of the few skincare ingredients that have so much research and data to back their efficacy. And that's because they've actually been around for a really long time. On your skin, the different forms of vitamin A go through a conversion process using the enzymes that are naturally available on the skin. And they all end up as retinoic acid, which is the most active form of vitamin A. So how does retinoic acid work on the skin? Number one, it improves cell turnover. Now our skin naturally goes through a shedding process where the top layers of skin are full of some of the old dead skin cells and they naturally shed off. And they reveal the new skin cells that are coming up from underneath. Now, vitamin A actually helps speed up this process. This can help with skin texture and help shed off any damaged cells at the surface of your skin. And this process is actually what's dysfunctional in acne, which is why the vitamin A can help. Number two, it boosts collagen. The vitamin A molecules actually signal to the fibroblasts, which are the cells in your skin, and help stimulate collagen production. Collagen acts as the scaffolding under our skin. It's what makes it look firm, bouncy, and that's why vitamin A is considered the gold standard for anti-aging. Number three, hyperpigmentation. Vitamin A can actually help with hyperpigmentation because it can help break up some of the melanin molecules. And with improving that skin shedding process, you can actually remove some of the damaged skin cells from the surface of your skin that might be pigmented. This is particularly useful after photo damaged skin, skin that's been damaged by the sun. I also just wanna talk about the anti-aging side of the skincare industry. It is perfectly okay to age. Fine lines and wrinkles are perfectly normal part of your skin's process but I understand if you want to soften those effects a little bit as well so it's important to just maintain perspective that all of these things are normal parts of skin aging so what are the differences in the different types of vitamin A now both retinol and retinal are part of that vitamin A umbrella they're at different stages of this vitamin A ladder all leading to the most active form of vitamin A which is retinoic acid retinoic acid is also known as tretinoin now this ladder starts with retinol palmitate this is a molecule of vitamin A attached to a fatty acid chain. Now this is often used in moisturizers and in cleansers as well because the fatty acid makes it very very gentle and moisturizing on the skin. Now this is furthest away from the most active form of vitamin A and this means it doesn't have a huge vitamin A effect in it. This is why you find it in products that aren't necessarily advertised as vitamin A products. Next up is the retinol. This is the most popular form of vitamin A. It's the one that's available most widely, most commercially through cosmeceuticals and beauty products. And it's also the one that's probably been around for the longest. It comes in a variety of concentrations all the way from 0.1% to 1% and higher. This is generally considered an entry level product. It's in a lot of anti-aging serums and night creams. That's because it's very gentle and well tolerated. You can definitely get a really good effect from retinol if it's used over a long period of time and consistently. Next up, we have retinol. Now the retinol molecules will go through an oxidation process and turn into retinaldehyde molecules. There are lots of products that have retinol in it so that you can skip that initial conversion process. It allows you to have slightly higher concentrations of the molecule so that you actually end up with more of the active form in it. It requires less conversion into the active form, making it more potent and stronger. And because it actually requires less steps in converting to retinoic acid, you get results much quicker. 
They're definitely something that's much newer on the market. You can get them from 0.01% all the way to 0.2%. Then we have retinoic acid, and this is the most active form of vitamin A. This is the same as tretinoin. Now, you can only get this in the UK from prescription medication. This is definitely the most potent, the most effective form of vitamin A. However, that means it comes with the biggest load of side effects, and that means it can actually reduce the effect that you want. Retinoic acid or tretinoin comes with a lot of redness, dry skin, sometimes peeling, and a lot of people cannot tolerate it. And it's because of this high side effect profile that it is only a prescription medication in the UK. It needs to come with a lot of counseling on how to use it. Medically, it's used to treat acne because of that cell turnover effect. If you have significant acne, it's so important Important that you see your doctor because you might need tretinoin or retinoic acid or even oral forms of vitamin A to help with your acne. So which out of these is the best to use? There are so many options and it's a difficult decision. For me, choosing the best vitamin A is a balance between the effectiveness and the side effects that you get. It's important to use retinol for beginners and retinoic acid or tretinoin is only available by prescription from a doctor. It has a lot of potential for side effects so it needs to be used with caution. And that leaves Retin Now. The reason I like Retin Now is that it has a perfect balance between effectiveness and side effects. Because it is only one step away in that conversion process from retinoic acid, Retin Now is more effective than retinol. But because it's not retinoic acid or tretinoin, you actually get less side effects. So it's that perfect balance between the two. So who should use Retin Now? I would say that Retin Now is suitable for those who have used retinol before, looking for something a bit more effective, but are not really ready for the prescription strength retinoids. I would say that I wouldn't use Retin Now as its sole acne treatment, but you can use it in conjunction with other over-the-counter or cosmeceutical acne treatments like salicylic acid or azelaic acid. Now, I know what you're thinking. If it's all about strength and potency, why isn't everyone using retinoic acid? Now, there are a few things to consider. Number one, stronger isn't always better. A lot of people just cannot tolerate the high strength retinoic acid. If you have skin that is prone to redness, peeling or dryness, that just won't be for you and retin now might be better. Number two, it's prescription only. Like I mentioned earlier, retinoic acid is considered a drug and that's why it's prescription only. It has a high side effect profile. Number three, vehicles. Now I don't mean cars or the delivery vans it comes in. I mean that every active ingredient needs a vehicle to help deliver it onto the skin to make sure it's reaching the right cells of your skin. Often these beauty brands, these cosmeceutical brands will spend a lot of time developing their base in different formulations in different iterations to see what works best. They can take a lot of the creative risks and try different cosmeceutical ingredients and different active ingredients. They can mix in different soothing ingredients, things like niacinamide, things like ceramides, and create some really exciting novel skincare that has a number of different effects on our skin. Typically, retinoic acid, because it is a drug, has to go through a vigorous screening process which allows them to take less risks with the base. It means means they can't always mix in a different active ingredients and take those risks without proper testing methods. And actually some of those over-the-counter, more gentle vitamin A products will actually have better effect on your skin because of the combination of what's in their base serums. The brands do go through testing to make sure it's safe and gonna be something suitable for the shelves, but that process is quite different to drug testing. Hopefully that makes sense, but definitely leave me a comment if you have any questions about that. Now, as a lot of you guys know, I love to look at the research about skincare. Looking at the data and the clinical trials helped me understand how effective a skincare ingredient is. First of all, I've gone through this paper that looked at a number of different clinical trials all around vitamin A and looking at the different types. It is fascinating to see how much research there is that back all the different types of vitamin A and this is a lot more than other skincare ingredients. A lot of newer active ingredients don't have this kind of data to back it up, especially newer things like snail mucin. There are a lot of gold standard research to back up vitamin A, which means there are randomized double blind control studies. Focusing on retin now, this paper is a comparison study of retin now to hide 0.05% and tretinoin 0.05%. The trial looked at 135 people with photo damaged skin. That just means skin that has had the effects of aging coming from sun damage. They particularly looked at the crow's feet area. Of the 125 people, there was 40 people using the retinaldehyde, 
40 people using the tretinoin and 45 people using that base vehicle cream on its own. The biggest reduction in skin roughness and wrinkles that they noticed was actually at week 18. Then they looked again at week 44 and they saw there was a continued effect of the vitamin A. Most importantly from this study, you could see the direct comparison of the two vitamin A types. The tretinoin had a much higher side effect profile and that meant that people couldn't use it as much as they wanted to. They were finding it hard to deal with the side effects such as redness, peeling and dryness. Now the caveats to this research. Because tretinoin is a drug, it is considered that tretinoin will have a almost guaranteed side effect and effectiveness profile. With the retinaldehyde, because it's not a drug, not every retinaldehyde will be necessarily made the same. It means that they will come with different bases and they can't always guarantee the effect. But what we are seeing across the board is that retinal has less side effects. And that's the really important thing to know here. Because retinal is a cosmeceutical, it's gonna be available in those over-the-counter products like Crystal Retinal. It can be combined with soothing ingredients that will help you tolerate the retinal as well as give you those benefits as well. My general concern is that retinol is actually the most suitable for a lot of people who are looking for anti-aging effects. Tretinoin should be reserved if you've got quite severe acne and you need to speak to your doctor about that. It can be used for anti-aging if you know you can tolerate high doses of the retinoic acid. By the way, if you're liking this video, hit subscribe. I release videos every week about dermatology and skincare. So hit subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Now let's talk about the thing that you guys have been waiting for. I've mentioned this in my best and worst Medicaid products. This is definitely in the best list. I've used the Crystal Retinol product on and off for years. I actually have worked my way all the way up to Crystal Retinol 10 and an X, I'm gonna use Crystal Retinol 20. What I love about this range is that they have a very clear lab of progression. So you can go all the way from using Crystal Retinal 1 if you feel like you're worried about the side effects, if you're not quite sure how your skin will tolerate it, and then you can slowly build yourself up all the way to Crystal Retinal 20. This means that you can go through that slow progression that I always tell my patients as well, and this leads to lower levels of irritation because you're also giving your skin a chance to get used to using retinoids. In this product, Medicaid have created a really exciting base. It's got molecules like glycerin and hyaluronic acid that again help reduce the side effects but also help with that skin plumping hydrated effect. What I love about these products is that they have an excellent texture. You can see that they have this incredibly sort of light almost a tiny bit sort of whipped and creamy texture, really unique compared to other types of serums that just sink into your skin really, really easily. It's really, really nice to massage in to your skin and it leaves it nice and soft. Sometimes you can get retinoids that feel a little bit gritty if they're not particularly stable, but this feels wonderful and smooth. It also comes in these airtight packages, which I love. It means that they're not too difficult to travel with. You know that they're gonna stay nice and stable in this packaging as well. The only main con with the Crystal Retinol range is the price point, but I feel that vitamin A is a really important active in my skincare routine, and for me, that's something that I'll definitely invest in. I've been using this range on off for a long time, and I'm actually able to take it all the way down to my neck without causing irritation. The skin on your neck sometimes is a bit more sensitive than your face because the skin can be a little bit thinner, and that means you want to be really careful not to overdo it with any vitamin A to stop it getting dry and uncomfortable. With the Crystal Retinol products, I've not had any any issues with that. Now I also want to show you guys the Crystal Retinol Eye Cream. This is the first time I'm using these so I'm so excited. I always get questions about using vitamin A around the eyes and my answer is always that you have to be really careful. The skin around your eyes can be really really sensitive because the skin is a little bit thinner around there. You also have to be careful if you often get eyes that get irritated if products come near it. Now the Medicaid eye cream has combined the retinols with ceramides. If you followed me for a while you know I'm a huge huge, huge ceramide fan. I find that my skin behaves so much better when I'm using ceramides in my moisturizers or in some serums. The ceramides act as a glue between your skin cells and help them remain supple and firm without losing too much water and getting dehydrated. And that's really important around the eyes, especially if you wanna use an active ingredient like retinol to target some of the fine lines and wrinkles we get around our eyes. That's a really natural place to get some smile lines and some wrinkles, which is perfectly normal but if you just want to soften the appearance, this is a good way to try that. If you combine the retinol and the ceramides, you can get really excellent effects at softening those lines. An eye cream
cream like this won't change the shape of the hollows around your eyes, which is really important to know, but it can help soften those lines, particularly at the crow's feet area. Now, with this product, I just wanna say a little goes a long way. You really only need the tiniest bit. I would use just the tiniest dot. You literally only need about that much per eye. And again, it just blends in really, really easily around your eye, leaving it nice and soft. And that's pretty much it. Don't forget, always use sunscreen when you're using vitamin A. Vitamin A can make your skin more sun sensitive, but you also don't want your skin to get photo damage and undo all the wonderful effects. And I'll say this again, fine lines and wrinkles are all perfectly normal. They're all perfectly normal parts of our skin aging. And it's okay to wanna to soften those effects. If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. If you're hanging around, I will link a video going through my best and worst Medicaid products. Let me know your vitamin A experiences in the comments below. Thanks for watching.